Y'all, Prince. What up, world? This is our old five four. What's going on, good people? This is our O'Shea. Welcome back to the Who Made Y'all Priest podcast, where we talk about our spiritual journeys, our everyday life experiences, and the issues of the times from the perspective of two people who just happen to be priests. Man, I see you rocking your nail, yeah, man. I see you. I see you. Uh, you representing that Kappa Alpha Psi. Yeah, I had to represent because um, on April fourth was my 23rd anniversary of being initiated to Cap Alpha Psi, the legendary Z Tall chapter. You know what I'm saying? So I just felt like I needed to represent. Plus, it's been hanging up in, in the closet. And I ain't wore this in years. So I was like, you know what? Let me go ahead and get some wear out of it. That's, that's one of them, like, uh, baseball shirts? Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> even when I was in college, I wasn't really a big nail you person, like. I ain't really wear it that often, you know. I, back in in my era, you know, the news we went to the to the parties clean, you know what I'm saying? Hard bottoms, you know what I'm saying, and button up. So I ain't do a whole lot of nail yet. So, you know, I got a couple of pieces. Then I got my travel hoodie that I wear, like when I be in the airport and traveling and stuff like that. But other than that, I don't really do nothing. So I'm like, yeah, you know, I got this years ago. And it's been hanging up. So like, let me throw this on. I feel you, man. I feel you represent, man. 23, 23 years in, man. Congratulations. 23 years, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, 23 oh, years is a long time to be doing anything. It is. It is. You know what I'm saying? Except getting money. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I feel that. Yeah, 23 years getting money. That's cool. Everything else, yeah, it is a long, long. <laughs> what you was getting ready to say i cut you off oh yeah um before we get started we appreciate all our listeners please smash that that like button for us and um if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and hit that subscribe it's a bell i think somewhere over there yeah somewhere over there go ahead and uh smash that for us we appreciate your support um, definitely but Oh, Shayon, you got some uh, current events that you want to get to. Yeah, man. You know, I was uh, scrolling through TikTok here recently. You know, I I feel like I'm one of the uh, hip youngsters now. I scroll through uh, through TikTok and things of that nature. And I happen to be scrolling through TikTok and came across uh, an occurrence in the country of Canada where... Uh, they were having a women's weightlifting competition. And forgive me, I'm unfamiliar with the term, so I don't know what transgender woman or transgender man means. So I'll just say that this was a man that was identifying as a woman uh, who was allowed to compete in this women's weightlifting competition. So this uh, this man beat all of the records, beat all of the records uh, of these women. I'm talking about he was smashing these women. And then you had a, and then you had another man who is a real man, but identified as a woman to prove a point. He identified as a woman and beat <laughs> the dude that was identifying as a woman by like a hundred pounds. So the cold part about it was that the first man who identified as a woman was upset with the other man that identified as a woman and claimed that the second man identifying as a woman showed up with malicious intent. And you and I have had personal conversations where uh, you talked about if we're going to accept this, we have to accept everything that comes with it. 
We're not going to be doing the, this is okay, that's not okay. This is okay, that's not okay. If we're going to allow women to identify as men and men to identify as women, we have to be prepared for all of the unintentional and the intentional consequences that come behind that. You're going to have people who are going to consider themselves transracial. I've already heard it. Uh, I've, I've seen people who identify as disabled. Uh, I've seen all, all kind of things people are identifying as, as all of these different things. My thing is I identify as not guilty. So I need, I need this, uh, I need, I need my record expunged. That's what I need. <laughs> what you think right, about that, man? Right. <laughs> man, what you think about that? You said it, like I said before, you can't pick and choose when you open up Pandora's box. You got to let everything in. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we're going to get to a period of time where pedophilia is no longer a thing because children can identify as adults, mm. you know, and and then they can date whoever they want to. Or you're going to, you're going to have adults identifying as children. Oh, I've already seen that on, on Me too. Media. Yeah, yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So you're you're already there. The the laws haven't caught up, but let let one of those all you need is this. You just need a good attorney who is a pedophile to champion some children who want to then identify as adults and push that thing all the way up to the Supreme Court, and then it's a done deal. Right. I would have said that Roe v. Wade would never be overturned. And, and I mean, I said this a long, long time ago, and here we are. You know, it's been overturned. The concept of men identifying as women or women identifying as men, years after I said that Roe v. Wade would be overturned still wasn't even a concept in my mind that that was going to be a thing, but here we are. So it's pretty much at least here in the States. And once it happens in the States, it'll slowly kind of, you know, go everywhere. Everything is going to be on the table. Mm -hmm. And the way I look at it is, is that now it's an, it's a human expression. So humans are going to keep, expanding upon that expression right there was a there was a time i'm sure that the idea of having people human beings as slaves wasn't even something that people could fathom and then it happened <clears throat> now that the pandemic hit and the forest mandate things of that nature that's opened up a can of worms roe v wade being overturned open up a can of worms like the we're keeping pushing these things to the limit right and it's going to keep going and going and going and going hopefully i'm alive just to see how this play out have my popcorn ready oh you definitely you definitely will be because i don't think it's too far off uh i think like right now we're even having difficulty defining what a woman is like why do we have difficulty defining what a woman is. Why are we so uh, deranged that we want to admit or this 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 falsity that men can get pregnant? This this is this is this is, this is absurdity to, to me. This is this is this is crazy to me. This is crazy talk to me. And then if you speak up and say that you don't want your children uh, being taught transgenderism homosexual sex, heterosexual sex in school, then you are considered a bigot. Uh, the law in Florida that many people kept calling the don't say gay bill had nothing to do at all with homosexuality and had everything to do with them not wanting their children from pre-K to third grade, not learning about sex at all. To me, that's not that's common sense. That's something automatic. I don't even want my high school child learning about sex in public schools. I'll I'll take care of that. I'll teach 
my children about sex. I'll teach my children about um, politics. I'll, I'm, I want to raise my children with my morals, my values, my beliefs. Whether you think they are good or not, these are my children and they don't belong to the state. So I want to be able to raise my children in the ways that I think that they should go and then let them decide what they want to do when they get of age. So I'm, I'm with you on that. You know, I agree 100 percent. I don't have an issue with critical race theory not being taught in school because I feel like you should teach that at home. Exactly. Like, why would you want somebody outside of yourself? Or even this, we understand the demographics of the teachers in this country, which means more than likely if you are a minority, if you're African American, if you're Mexican, if you're Asian, right? The history that you are going to be taught is going to be taught, or any concepts around racism for that matter, is going to be taught by somebody who is not of your same background. Why mm. would you want those people teaching your children? And to me, it's just a symptom of Western society. See, everybody chasing money, everybody chasing all kind of other things. The family has been, we as a people, first of all, have devolved from where we were. The, the family structure isn't what it used to be. So everybody's chasing money. It takes more money to do the things that, or live the lifestyle that maybe our grandparents live. So we're all doing that. So it's like, let's push off as much as we can onto somebody else in regards to raising and rearing our children. I have a, a friend who's from Trinidad and like born and raised, came over here for college. And she has two kids, she's married with two kids. Her parents came over to, to visit one Christmas. And her parents were just like almost disgusted with how much the kids weren't in the home. Mm -hmm. Like how long they were away at school and after, you know, school programs and stuff like that. Like they were heartbroken. We do that without batting an eye. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just sad, man. I'm trying to keep my son, I don't want him to be homeschooled per se, but I do want him to be at home as long as possible. No, it just it's something wrong with the concept or idea of him just being away from home eight hours a day, six hours a day. Right. And, Nine hours a day. And by a system that we claim is oppressive to us. Right. We, we claim that this system is oppressive to us, and yet we want them to teach our kids every day. Like I don't I don't understand, and I love I, I love my people, but I don't understand people, black people who say that they want critical race theory taught in schools while at the same time saying that the system is oppressive to our people. Why, why would we um, want them to teach us about race and racism in America? We experienced it. We lived through it. Those, those are, they can't tell us anything that our mothers and grandmothers didn't tell us. They can't tell us anything about the experiences that we ourselves have had. Um, this is this is it's lunacy to me. It just it doesn't make sense. I'm 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 fully against teaching critical race theory in public school. I'm against uh, teaching about sex in school. I don't care what kind of sex it is. I'm I'm against teaching uh, anything that has to do with gender affirming. Um, let us let us deal with that at home. Let us let us deal with that at home. We we are also talking about we are also giving teenagers the ability to consent to medical procedures that are irrevocable, but right. they can't but they can't consent to buy cigarettes. They can't consent to sex. They can't consent to all of these other things, but they can consent to getting puberty blockers in changing their sex and having these top and bottom surgeries and 
Yeah, this is crazy to me, man. This is this is it's crazy to me. Right. And so and let me clear something up because people lead with their emotions way mm -hmm. too often. I feel like that is probably one of the biggest issues that people have on a personal level, leading with emotions. So I'm sure people are going to hear this and think, oh, they're anti-LGBT. Right. <laughs> no, I am pro you doing whatever it is that you want to do. That's your business, right? It's not mine. Do whatever you want to do. But I will say this, and I don't think people understand this. There is karma created with everything. Karma meaning an action, right? You walk around smacking people in the mouth. The energy that you're going to create is somebody at a minimum who better than you going to smack you in the mouth. Or most likely, somebody's going to do some real physical harm. You're going to smack the wrong person and they like, oh, I know I can't mess with you and they got a gun and they're going to shoot you or not, they're going to stab you. Mm. Or you just kind and generous and loving and you're going to get that same karma, that same energy, that same action in return. It is what it is. So choose whatever it is that you want to do. Understand you put some energy out there what are you going to get in return? So, um, but it's here to stay and it's going to continuously expand because that's just what, that's what the human experience is about. It's about growth and expansion. Now, how you expand is up to you. Right. But yeah, this is, this isn't something that's just going to go away. I agree. I agree. So who we got? So who we got on this episode, man? What we doing? What we doing this episode? We have a who made y'all priest first. And this is where you got to sound the horn. <laughs> <laughs> on this episode of the Who Made Y'all Priest, we will be sitting down and interviewing someone who is not a priest for the right. first time. We will be the only priest on the show, but we're going to introduce you to somebody who has a powerful message, a powerful word, and who, while they're not a priest, highly spiritual and highly powerful in their own right. So let's introduce our first guest. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Alafia. 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 <laughs> What's going on, Kasuti, man? How you living, man? How you living out there in beautiful Arizona? I'm doing phenomenal, man. You know, it's a nice, bright day. A little breeze, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm blessed, man. man. I'm blessed. How y'all doing? Good, good. You look like you have ascended upon the level <laughs> of all the mundane. You got on all white. You got on your leg cage, man. Uh, you, is that a cloak? You know, you know, just a little, a little, a little thread. You know, it it, it keeps me in divinity. If I wants me to be in divinity, it keeps me in divinity. I know that's why you just stole my look. Uh -huh. <laughs> I gotta get you one of these. I gotta get you one. Yeah, man, we need that, man. You know, Jimmy say he wait. Uh, Fafore say he waiting till he ascends. Then he gonna get him a cloak. He was like, then that's when he gonna start speaking in parables and uh, do his sermon on the mount. So, you know, he See, waited. It's, it's, he waited it's right not now. about waiting, Jimmy. It's about being it now. You know what I mean? When you throw the cloak on, you be it now, then your ascension is gonna come. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, you gotta, I had it backwards. You had it backwards. Right. <laughs> you know what? See, that's why we got you on the show. <laughs> that's what I'm here for, man. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, man. We appreciate you. We appreciate you coming on, man. We know you busy out there you doing your thing out there man so we appreciate you taking some time out to come and speak with us man we really appreciate you i appreciate y'all having me man i want to sit here and add as much value uh to the listeners you know i appreciate both of y'all both of y'all have been pivotal in my growth my spiritual growth my spiritual alignment over these last few months man and if any way i can add value to you and y'all platform that's what i'm here for man we appreciate that man we appreciate that so introduce yourself to the people man you know we know you We've been rocking with you for months now. Uh, 
But our people, our listeners don't know you, man. So introduce yourself to the people and tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Yeah, what's up, y'all? My name is Kasuti. Uh, Kasuti is Swahili for purpose, right? Kasuti Muwiti, which means purpose shepherd. And uh, I'm somebody that helps people discover their purpose. I'm teaching them the tools and skills necessary in order to actually live in it to create the reality in which they want to live in. Uh, so that's what I do. You know, I speak around the world. I've spoken around the world on stages all over. I coach high level seven and eight figure entrepreneurs, working them with their uh, working with them on their thoughts and their way of being right. Helping them truly create what is it that they want to see show up in their life by not focusing on trying to have it, but by focusing on being the person needed to produce it. Uh, so that's what I do, man. That's what I do. That's a lot, wow. man. That's a lot. Yeah. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. I appreciate it. Now, you have the distinction of being the very first person to be interviewed who is not a priest of V5. Yeah. However, though, you are a spiritual person, amongst other things. So here on the Who Made Y'all Priest podcast, we like to talk to our guests and have them, you know, walk the listeners through their spiritual journey. So walk us through your spiritual journey. How did you get to E5? Oh, man, how did I get to E5? You know, I think that when the student is ready, the teacher comes. Mm -hmm. And E5 is a, is a teacher to me, right? It's a way of life. It's a... It's a studying of being observant of everything around you. So I know last year I was in a space where I wanted to see and learn the depths of creation, right? The oculent, the esoteric knowledge to see how far creation comes. I truly believe that each and every one of us come from a creator. So that makes us a creator. Each and one of us come from the God. So that makes us a God. So I wanted to see the depths of how is it, how far can I take this creation thing, right? How far can I take creating my reality? And uh, if I got introduced to me as a, as a way of life, you know, I tell people what if I means to me is I tell people that uh, in some languages, the word God is unfathomable, unspeakable. Right. So it's kind of hard to fathom this huge energy, this source. Right. So the best way to understand the creator is to study its creations. Um, and that's what if I is to me. You know, people say that we're spiritual beings having a human experience. But if we're spiritual beings having a human experience, why is that not a spiritual being having a tree experience or a spiritual being having a water experience or a spiritual being having a turtle experience, right? And what Ifa means to me is studying all these different things, studying nature, studying the spirits of it and working with it in order to guarantee success. And I think that's, the, that's how deep in everything creation goes. But not just creating in my physical capacity, but working with all the spiritual around me, uh, spiritual entities around me in order to guarantee success. Uh, so I think that intention of setting the intention of how far creation goes is how Ifa found me and I found that. And it was just uh, a connection and it's changed my life ever since. You know, when we first met Kasuti, it was during the OIDSI conference over the summer. And we had breakout sessions. We had breakout sessions where we just men only, things of that nature. And I remember you doing a lot of speaking up. And I could tell that you were young. And I remember thinking like, man, this guy here has a lot of confidence. It wasn't arrogance, but it was a lot of confidence. And I'm listening to how you speak and how you present yourself. And I was like, either he a scammer <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or he owned or something. It, it, it's one or the other, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know, that type of, that, that energy, that presence where not rehearsed, but it, it was like polished, like from somebody who's done something for a, a period of time. Mm -hmm. And Osha, you and myself, we were tasked with like interviewing people, like, you know, that were a part of the conference, pulling them over. And I remember us saying, man, we got to interview that guy because he's, he's making his presence known. Right. And we tried to grab you a couple of times and the times we tried to grab you, you was on your computer working. Yeah, I said, "Oh yeah, he over there doing real work." Like, okay. Yeah, that was a that was a beautiful experience. You know, uh, Fafora and myself talked about you without even knowing your name. We talked about you for for a good little while that day. Uh, about man, we need to talk to that brother. He's like he said, we knew you were young, but you were very outspoken, very articulate. I didn't even want to stand up and talk and uh, and talk. <laughs> 
but you did and you didn't know anybody and no. you know we knew we knew a lot of people there and you didn't you didn't know anybody and you still stood yeah. up spoke your piece so yeah that was that was commendable so we knew we wanted to uh be in your presence we knew we wanted to uh spend time with you and talk to you man yeah and look how that look like- how things work you know not only have we sitting here doing the podcast interview now but you two have became spiritual mentors in my life to where we talk on a regular basis right so we didn't get to connect then at the OIDSI conference but uh going through Ishefa and going through everything getting my hand in Ifa when you guys are present there and now just being mentors in my life you know uh everything comes full circle everything comes for full circle absolutely, absolutely. so Leaving leaving Ifa aside for a second because we've uh, we've talked a lot about purpose and destiny from an Ifa perspective. From yeah. your perspective and what you teach uh, the people that you coach, what what is purpose? Uh, simply pur- purpose to me is a never ending journey of contribution. Mm. That's what it means to me. If I had to put in a definition, it'll be a never ending journey of contribution. You know, I've spoken all around helping people discover their purpose from the kids in the streets to the billionaire on a private jet to the athlete to the influencer, right? And one of the common denominators that I've seen after doing this tens of thousands of times is that you know you discovered your purpose when it's in it's incompletable. There's not a period to the end of the sentence. What do I mean by that? So if you're out there saying, you know, my purpose is to be a father to be a great father. Okay, well, after you were great and you raised your kids, are you purposeless now? Or my purpose Mm -hmm. is to be a veterinarian. Well, if you lost that job, are you purposeless now? Right? There's nothing in this world that was created without a purpose. Everything in this world was created with a purpose. Down to the colors of a flower. It's not for humans to marvel at its beauty. It's for certain insects are colorblind and only could see that color to attract it to that flower for pollination and everything of that nature, right? So why would the creator create you for you to ever be at a time period of your life where you're purposeless? Mm -hmm. And most people, they attach themselves to the vehicle of how to fulfill their purpose rather than the fuel of where it's coming from. You know, what do I mean by that? I say purpose is the fuel and passion is the vehicle. And most people get those two mixed up. Mm -hmm. So my purpose is to inspire a billion people to discover and live in their purpose and teach them the tools and strategies in order to do that. Right. I could do that through this podcast. I could do it through coaching. I, do, I could do it through writing a book. I could do it through speaking on stage. I could do it in a multitude of ways. So if I stop speaking, I'm not purposeless. I just need to find a different vehicle in order to fulfill on that. But a lot of people, they attach themselves to the vehicle rather than the purpose and the means behind it. So it's a never ending journey of contribution. If I want to inspire billion people to discover, billions of people to discover and live in their purpose, there's always going to be another person to aspire. If your purpose is to put a smile on somebody's face, there's always somebody else to put a smile on. If your purpose is to teach financial literacy to the masses, there's always going to be somebody left to teach financial literacy too. And that's when you know it's your purpose, when it's never ending. And it's, it's, it's not something that it's to complete. It's a journey to set upon, knowing that you're going to be walking it for the rest of your life. So that's what purpose means to me. And so now, now that's, that's broad. That was a beautiful definition of purpose. Uh, and broad but so why why is it important for people to know their specific purpose though you know we know what we we understand what purpose is but why is it so important for individuals to understand their individual purpose yeah because where there is no clarity clarity there is no confidence so a lot of people are moving throughout life and they're not confident in where their visions they're not confident in themselves because it's not rooted in anything you know, if you look at nature, the tree can only grow as high as it's rooted and as strong as it's rooted. Well, the roots for your life is that purpose. Hmm. So if you're building, but you don't have a foundation of what you're building upon, then it can get collapsed. That's why people go from relationship to relationship, from job to job, from cities to cities, and they're experiencing the same experiences, people after people, circumstance after circumstances, job after job, because when they're making their moves, their moves are not rooted in anything. See, it's very clear in my life. I just have to always ask myself, whatever opportunity presents itself, is this aligned with my purpose? If it's not aligned, then I don't do it. Is this person aligned with my purpose? Is this woman aligned with my purpose? Is this business partner aligned? Is this opportunity aligned? 
But see, when you're not aligned, then you go, you start chasing things. You chase money, right? You chase women, you chase men, you chase everything else outside because nothing inwardly is rooted in anything to be built upon. So I think it's very uh, important for you to know the reason in which you came to this earth, the purpose in which you were meant to fulfill on. Because then with that clarity, it breeds confidence of your moves. So your confidence when you go into a business, because it's not, should I start this business or should I not? It's, is this business aligned with my purpose or is it not? Mm -hmm. And when you're always working on your purpose and everything is in alignment, then what happens is you start having a compounding effect, right? Think about dollars. There's, you, everybody knows of compounding dollars, right? A percentage, you just let the money compound, compound. Well, I look at the same thing with purpose. So right now, if I speak to you guys on this podcast, and then I get off this phone and I have a, a, a coaching client, right? The same information that I just gave to you guys is the same information I could go to give to my client is the same information I could go speak about on stage. So I'm, so my knowledge is compounding because I'm always doing the same thing in alignment. If I go write a book, I could put this information in the book. <laughs> so what I learn, it compounds on each other. The progress I make, it compounds on each other. And that's why my life progresses faster than most. It's not because I'm better. It's because I'm acting in alignment. And if you get in alignment too, your life could be the same way. I mm, I say. You know, you talked about passion. And I think a lot of people get passion confused with purpose. Yeah. And I think they get themselves caught up in doing things like you were saying that is not in alignment with their purpose. So I think with this next question, maybe you can help some people look at themselves and, and, you know, what they're doing and how they are moving and maybe how they need to be moving. So how did you discover your purpose? And then how did you know that was what you were called to do? Yeah, man, I was in jail. I think the first thing that people need to do, uh, I have an easy formula for somebody to discover their purpose and I'll share that. Um, but for me, uh, it came out of stillness. You know, uh, I was in jail. I had open cases in four different counties. I was facing up to 10 years in prison. I lost over six figures. And in that stillness, I started questioning life. You know, like, what am I here for? Man, life got to be more than this. You know, I have over 10 homies that's been killed uh, in the streets. And I've taken a bullet through my head and I'm still here. So I'm like, I got to be here for a reason. Like, what is that reason? Right. So in that stillness, I started asking, what is my purpose? And I started kind of seeking that out. And I remember, uh, fast forward, I got out of jail. I got sentenced to three years on house arrest. And I'm on house arrest. And uh, I started diving into personal development. I watched The Secret when I was 18, The Law of Attraction, right? And it worked. I applied it in the streets. I made a lot of money. I just applied it in the wrong way. <laughs> so when I got out of jail this time, I said, you know what? Let me go dive back into The Secret, but let me use it in the right way. And I started listening to all these motivational speakers. And I had a vision of myself speaking on stage. I'll never forget it. And I was like, it felt so right. It felt like that was what I was meant to do. And when I started reflecting back on my life, man, I felt, I always tell people that I think the only thing that kept me alive through the streets and everything that I've been through was I always had a good heart and I always helped people. Like even in the midst mm -hmm. of selling, doing my dirt and everything, I always had a good heart and I always helped people, right? So when I started like following that feeling, that feeling started leading me down a path where it started bringing me to my purpose. Right. So for anybody out there that's looking to discover their purpose, you don't have to go to jail. You ain't got to sit still for a year. You ain't got to answer these three questions. And I promise in these three questions is your purpose. These are the three questions I speak about on stages around the world. I help everybody discover their purpose with these three simple questions is number one. Have every job in this world paid that exact same amount of money and you had the clock in to do something. What is it that you would do? Right. What is it that you would do? I'll tell you the questions and I'll tell you why that each question is important. Number two is what inspires you about that? And number three is what is the difference you will want to make in people's lives by doing that job? And those three questions is your purpose, right? So let me go back. If every job in this world paid the exact same amount of money and you had to clock in and do something, right? Just play along with me. You have to clock in. He's like, I'm an entrepreneur. I'll never clock in. Well, just say if you had to clock in and do something, what is it that you would do, right? The reason that that question is important is because you will only do things in which your heart desires and calls you to do. 
when you eliminate money, most people, they make their career decisions based off of economic potential, not off of personal fulfillment. Mm -hmm. So when you take out the equation of economic potential and you level the playing field, you're only going to do what you feel called to do. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, I'll speak on stage. Or if I had to clock and do a nine to five, I'll probably uh, teach kids or mentor kids of some sort, right? When you go to what inspires you about that? Well, Kasuti, what inspires you about speaking on stage? Uh, what, uh, what about what inspires you about speaking on stage? Well, man, I love just helping people transform. I love helping people discover their purpose because when I didn't know my purpose, my life was on the wrong path. I got caught up in the streets. I was making moves out of uh, not in alignment, out of misalignment. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's when I discovered my purpose that my life changed. What inspires you about it is that's when it gets personal. That's when it's your story. Oh, well, I want to uh, help other women because I didn't have my mother to help me. I want to teach financial literacy because I lost so much money. When I learned it, I realized that people don't know it. Right. A kid said I want to be a veterinarian because when I was a little, uh, my dog got hit by a car and I, uh, my dog was my best friend. And when I took my dog to the vet, the vet saved my best friend. So now I want to save other people's animals, their best friends as well. That's where it gets personal, right? So that's internal, that's intrinsic. And then what difference would you want to make in the lives of people by doing that job? That's where it becomes extrinsic. That's where the purpose comes out of. Well, if I was coaching little kids or helping little kids, I want them, I would want to help them discover their purpose and know that they could be doing, have anything in this world that they desire, right? That's where is the extrinsic uh, impact. So in those three questions is where you'll discover your purpose. And then in those three questions, once you have that purpose, put that purpose on a blank piece of paper in the middle, put a circle around it, draw some lines from it and start writing ways in which you could fulfill on that. So if my purpose is to save animals. I could be a zoologist. I could be a veterinarian. I could be this. I could be that. I could be this. And my purpose is to inspire people. I could speak. I could get on courses, right? And in those, those are where your passions is. And those are also the business opportunities that you can start starting for yourself. You have multiple streams of income within you tied around your purpose. You don't have to go through crypto and a bunch of other things to get uh, uh, multiple streams of income. That's how you develop multiple streams of income from you by identifying your purpose and identifying the ways in which you can fulfill on it. Hmm. Right, right. You know, every time I hear you talk about your story about, you know, getting shot in the head, I always think about when I go to my ancestors and I ask them to help me or to guide me, support me, whatever. I always throw in there, please don't do nothing wild to get my attention. Like, <laughs> yeah, I really said that. <laughs> don't burn my house down. Don't make me crash. Just come to me in a dream and whisper it softly to me. Like, yeah. and I'm going to go with it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> don't do nothing wild. So wow. I always think about that when I think about, you know, your story and getting shot. But that was an important part of your journey. That was an important part of your, your story, right? That's what yeah. adds to your legacy, to your greatness, to your mystique, you know? Yeah. You, you want me to tell you why that was so important real quick, man, before <laughs> you go to the next question? is because that's what sparked my attention to let me know that I'm here for a reason. You know, so many people come up to me and they be like, oh my God, because you're going to do great things. You survived a gunshot through the head. I know you're here for a reason. And I echo that same sentiment to you. Like, I know you're here for a reason. I should. Each and every person listening to this right now, you have literally made it through something that has destroyed somebody else. You made it through verbal abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, spiritual abuse, drug abuse. You've been bullied. You've been talked down. You've been forgotten about. You didn't have your mother or your father in your life. You literally have made it through something that somebody else has destroyed themselves to, regardless if it's committing suicide, uh, losing their mind, getting caught up in drug addiction. Like you've made it through something that has destroyed somebody else. So now you have to ask yourself, why? Hmm. Why is it that God kept you in your right mind? You're obviously in some kind of right mind if you're listening to this. But to somebody else, they fell victim to it. Right. You have to be here for a purpose. And I believe in universal law, right? They said for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Everything is polar. So if my life has been to the extent of almost throwing my life away in prison and almost dying on this end of the spectrum, <laughs> I got to There's something on the opposite end of the spectrum that got to be glorious. That's how I know that right. I'm here for greatness. 
because I've came right. too close to not. I came too, too close to a deathbed. I came too close to throwing my life away in prison and situations that people know about and situations that nobody will ever know. Right. So I know that there got to be something phenomenal here for me. And it's the same thing for each and every person listening to. Have you been to a place in your life where you've been down, you've been, you know, sad, depressed, whatever, felt like you forgot about, feeling like it's so low, life is so hard. Then if you do the work, you can get to the opposite end of the spectrum and get what spirit and your ancestors have for you. That event let me know that I was here for greatness upon reflection. I said, I said, you know, the crazy part is, is that um, we're going to cut everything you just said in that last piece out because I'm going to use that. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to memorize that. <laughs> yeah, hey, the way you said it. The way for it said it was so funny. He said, Hey man, you know the crazy part is I don't really about to cut all this out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All that you cut out. Yeah, whole thing. Yeah, it's powerful, man. It's realization. You know, wisdom is not in wisdom is not found in the activity and when a life event is happening. Wisdom is found upon the reflection of what happened. It's just most people, they never take time to be still and reflect. And it's that reflection is when I had that insight and it changed my life. So I tell people, reflect on all the things that you've been through, all the hardships. And like, ask, why are you still here? Like, you got to be here for, you got to be here for a purpose. And step into mm -hmm. that and watch your whole life change. Right. And I'm glad you brought that up. That's, that is a powerful point. People don't understand the difference between knowledge and wisdom. Knowledge is just having the information. Wisdom is the application. Yeah, mm -hmm. of that knowledge. There's a lot of symbolism about the devil in the Bible where it talks about um, him having knowledge but no wisdom. So mm. that's that's deep that you that you mentioned that. I hope again people taking notes and they really reflected on that. Yeah. So this season is about healing. You know, mm -hmm. we've had now I think you're the what maybe seventh person that we've interviewed about different modalities of healing and, and how to heal. And I don't think most people would, would put healing and purpose together. Right. Ivan Pavlov said that there was, he, in his reflex of purpose, he talked about there was nothing more important in this world than purpose. So from your perspective, how can knowing your purpose help us on our healing journey. Yeah, because you realize why you went through all the healing, why you, why you went through all the, the trauma. Mm. That's why purpose is so important. Upon discovering your purpose, you start understanding why you went through all the trauma that you went through in the first place. Mm. It was just a breeding ground to get life, to get rise for this new identity, this new person that you're living in that fulfills on their purpose. Imagine if I never got shot. Imagine if I never went to jail. I never, imagine if I was never in the streets. Imagine if I never had to figure out uh, my life and if I just had somebody to guide me from a young age to, to know myself and I didn't have to go through, you know, reading books, go through jail, go through all of this, being in the streets, going through all this to try to discover myself. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be the man that I am today. Mm -hmm. But it's healing when you could look at everything that you've been through and realize that the traumas and things that you've been through, it wasn't really for you. It was for you to have a, a, a story. It was for you to be able to go through something that now you can help somebody else out because you know what it feels to be in those same shoes. And you know how it feels not to have somebody when you were there. So now you know the importance of being there for somebody else. Right. That's how the two uh, uh, align. That's how the two correlate. And discovering your purpose, you start healing because you start figuring out, oh, man, I realize why I've been through this. I realized God was using this in my life so now I could be the person that I am today. I can have the heart that I have today. I can have the empathy. I can have the love for people that I have today. Right. And that clarity, the healing process starts when you start figuring out that life is always happening for you. It's never happening to you. The things that you went through, it didn't happen to you. It happened for you. And if I, I invite you to consider the perspective and step into that as if that was true, just try it on for yourself and see the way in which things happen for you. 
your life will become way more free and you will understand that everything that you went through, God was just preparing you for this new chapter of your life. But it's up to you to take on that perspective and see that. And that's when the healing starts. You know, I think uh, the perspective of Ifa that all of the experiences that we've ever had, that we chose them. I think that that perspective alone with nothing else in Ifa, just learning that perspective and seeing the world from that perspective changes everything. When you understand that you chose these experiences and for a reason, you chose these experiences to build character in you, to build fortitude in you, to build patience in you because there's something that you have to do on the other side. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is to go through this. You have yeah. to go through this first. This is the this is the schooling. This is the schooling and you graduate when you get to the other side and you're able to perform because you've had these experiences. Yeah. So just that just that perspective from Ifa, you know, and Fafore and myself, when we do readings for people, we talk a lot about that trying to make people understand that these experiences you chose them and you yeah. chose them for a reason you chose your yeah. parents you know you had all of these experiences with your parents but you chose them and you chose them for a reason you chose them to bring you experiences that would allow you to change shift and grow and to elevate so yeah i think that's a beautiful thing and i understand uh that finding your purpose your reason your why uh is healing. I definitely understand yeah. how to heal. Yeah, that's one of the that's one of the biggest uh, uh, um, shifts even that Ifa provides is that like you chose it all. Now it's about discovering why. And I like saying even discovering more than finding. Finding is like extrinsically looking, and that's why most people have never found their purpose because they're they're extrinsically looking in relationships and people and cities and maybe they just walking like maybe it's underneath a rock here like if i pick up this rock there's my purpose right it's like extrinsically looking discovering is intrinsically looking it's like going within and discovering and pulling out that that is already within you and when people understand that your purpose is not out here it's already within you, you just got to pull it out right then you start going within instead of going outwardly looking for it and things and like mm. you said, with Ifa, when you know that you chose everything, like you chose all these experiences to cultivate the person needed that you are today, that you take back power over your life. You stop being a, a victim over circumstances and you start using those to empower you and give you confirmation that you're on the right path in your destiny to be able to make the difference that you are called to make. Right. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, I've watched a lot of your videos. We have watched a lot of your videos. And one of the most profound videos that uh, that I remember is you being in Kenya in front of all of those African children and them calling you Kasuti. So tell us again what Kasuti mean, how that how that came about. How did you end up in in Kenya and how did you end up in front of uh, all of those children, inspiring those children? Oh, my God, man. Uh... It was through listening through spirit that led me there. You know, when I get a nudge from spirit, I act on it even when I can't see how it makes sense. I so it wow. was a Wednesday. It was a Wednesday, man. I'm in LA. I'm in my apartment in LA. And uh, spirit said, uh, you need to go to Africa. I said, go to Africa. He said, yeah, you need to go to Af Africa. Marcus Garvey has a quote. It said, people without prior knowledge of their uh, history, culture, or origin is like a tree with no roots. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I wasn't rooted. I needed to get rooted in my life. A lot of things were going on business, financially at that time. I just felt like I wasn't rooted. So Spirit said, go to Africa. So I woke up, I put a post on, uh, on Facebook. Does anybody know anybody in Africa? And like, people were like, where in Africa? I'm like, I don't know. Spirit told me to go to Africa. I don't know where yet. A dude, one of my friends, he reached out to me. He's a film producer. He shot a documentary over a guy named uh, Mully in Africa. And he said, hey, I shot this documentary, watch it and give me a call. People send me music videos and this came, I don't watch none of it. But some told me to watch this two hour documentary. I watched it and long story short, people could go look it up right now. It's called a Mully documentary. It's on YouTube for free. I think they got Mully documentary, uh, documentary.com. Long story short, it's about a guy that was, he became a, he was homeless 
Uh, he's from Kenya. He woke up at like seven years old. His family abandoned him. He was homeless from seven to 15 in the slums of Kenya. Walked to Nairobi, just knocking on doors to get a job. A lady let him in. She taught him how to, uh, he was in charge of housekeeping. Her husband um, had a had a lawn care like business type of thing, an agriculture business, like a thousand employees over a company. He hired him on and then put him as a manager. And he started learning about business. And long story short, he became a multimillionaire in the 80s. And then mm. God called him and told him that he needs to go back and save kids. So he shut down all of his businesses and he committed his life to saving kids and, you know, has like seven different schools. He's helped over like 10,000 kids. Like it's, he's phenomenal in Africa, making a huge difference. He's like a modern day Mother Teresa or something, right? So I watched this and I was like, man, I feel like I'm watching the older version of myself. Like, I don't care about the money. I just want to have, have the impact. So I called my homie. His name was Lucas. I said, hey, Lucas, I watched. He said, yeah, what do you think? I said, man, this is phenomenal. I said, man, I have to meet this man. He said, cool, this is in March of 2021. So this is like when COVID is still going on, right? He said, oh, this is great. Maybe, you know, maybe the end of this year, I can set it up. I said, nah, I want to do it this weekend. He was like, Kasuti, what, what, what are you talking about? At that time, my name was Kavan. Kavan, what are you talking about? That's like in four days. I said, nah, man, some spirit is telling me I need to meet this man. He said, I'll call him and see. So he called the uh, Mully. Mully said I could come. So I ended up flying out four days later to Africa. So I get to Africa. By the time I got there, they already set up a whole itinerary for me, right? So four days ago, I didn't know where I was going to Africa. Now, four days later, I'm in Africa with a whole itinerary for three weeks, right? So they set up a whole itinerary. I come out there, and it's just like taking me to the slums and taking me all around to the different places. And they started talking to me like, oh, what is it that you do? And I started telling them how I speak, helping people discover their purpose. And they're like, oh, this is phenomenal. You know, can you speak to our kids? And I was like, yeah, I'll speak. People asked me why I was going to Africa. And my only response was, I don't know. I'm just going to get whatever God has for me. They're like, I mean, are you trying to do business with this man? I'm like, nah, whatever God has for me, that's what I'm going to get. I'm just going to get whatever God has for me. Right? I'm spirit led. I always follow direction. So they come back with my itinerary, updated itinerary about me speaking. Bro, they had me speaking like two times this day, three times this day. I'm like, this is the whole speaking circuit. I'm like, dang. I'm like, hold on real quick. I'm like, God, I didn't come out here to speak. God, like, I, mean, I could have did that back in the States. God, like, well, what did you come out here for? I said, well, I came out here to get whatever you have for me. And God said, well, I want you to speak. So I ended up speaking to all the kids in the slums, the schools, and that's how it came about. At the end of my speeches, I say, what's your, and then the crowd says purpose. Well, at this uh, particular group, they didn't speak English. They only spoke Swahili, so I had a translator. So I said, what's your, and they say, Kasuti. What's your Kasuti, right? So then we do it. What's your Kasuti? What's your Kasuti, right? The engagement goes amazing. The kids are electrified, right? I just feel the energy of it. The next day I come back because I'm giving those same kids. I'm giving them, I'm feeding them like meat, rice, things that they don't normally eat. You know, I bought food. It was about for 400 kids. I bought lunch for them. So when I come back, my car is pulling up. And as I'm pulling up, they like swarming the cars like I'm like the Beatles or something. And they just chanting, Kusuri, Kusuri, Kusuri. And when I tell you, like, my energy just felt like I expanded. Like, when I tell you, my consciousness just felt like it just went to a different level. The way my heart opened up and my love that I felt, mm. it felt like God was just like reintroducing me back to myself. Mm. So that's why I say that my mother named me Kavan, but the people named me Kasuti. Mm. And after that, I was just like, you know, Kasuti is the person to fulfill on this purpose, this mission that I have. And after that, that's when I changed my name to Kasuti. And uh, that's the story about how I went to Africa and how I got the name. So then my godfather, my godfather, uh, Mully, at the end, he said, um, Dr. Mully said, you know, I'll give you a name. He said, Spirit wants me to give you a name. He said, I don't know what the name is yet, but I tell you, you know, before the end of it, when it comes to me. So then when I went back, he said, uh, Spirit told me the name for you. He said, the name is Muiti. And his tribal language is Kakamba. So Muiti means shepherd and Kakamba. He said, Jesus was a shepherd and so are you. So he gave me the name Muwiti as a shepherd. So Kusuri Muwiti, purpose shepherd. Uh, that's where my name came from. Wow.
Man, that's dope. Man, every time I watch that video, it do something to me. I be, man, I, I done watched it 10 times and I be choked up like, you know, it's the first time. And, you know, the one thing, the most powerful thing I think you said in that whole thing is where you said, spirit told me to go. And when spirit nudges me, I listen. Yeah. That is the divine feminine. Yeah. Right? That's the reason why last season we talked yeah. about the divine feminine, and this season we're talking about healing. That's, man, that's powerful. But see, healing you know, where it comes from. Go ahead, on. What was, what, was, what was more than that for me is the part where you say, regardless of how you think it's going to look, Right. To me, that's the that's the part that's the part there because it's right. easy to go when spirit is leading you to do something that you are comfortable with. It's yeah, easy exactly. to do that, right. but it's difficult. It's difficult when spirit is telling you to do something and you don't really want to do it, or you can't logically come up with how is this going to look in the end. So that takes yeah. courage. That takes patience. That's something mm -hmm. that I'm working on myself. Is following the dictates and the admonition of spirit, even when I can't understand how it's going to look on the other side. Yeah. That's what I'm working on. Yeah. About. See, I think that's everything in life. You know, energy can't be created nor destroyed. It can only be transferred. I should. Mm. So a thought is energy. So if you have a thought, a business idea, a thought of how to do something, you didn't come up with that thought. You didn't create that thought. You re receive that thought mm, right. now the question becomes where did you receive it from see when you know you're in alignment this is when we go back to purpose when you know you're in alignment with your purpose then you know every thought that you have is being received from source from your ancestors for your highest benefit mm. so you no longer question ideas that you have because you know it's an idea that was given to you it wasn't you you didn't create this and when you know you're in alignment you know that is given to you for your highest benefit so yeah. if it tells me to move, I move. If it tells me to go to this place, I go to this place. If it tells me to start this business, I start this business. If it tells me I need to meet this person, I go and meet that person. Because I know I'm in alignment. So the thoughts that I'm receiving has to be for my highest and greatest benefit. Has to be for mm -hmm. my ancestors. Has to be from spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the point of finding your purpose. And through that healing occurred. When I tell you I went out to Africa and it was one of the most healing experiences of my life, but it mm -hmm. came from listening to spirit. I would have, who would have thought I woke up on Wednesday and Monday, I'd be in Africa speaking across the country. Like, uh, I, 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 could not have, I could not have created that even if I had six months to plan it. Right. But see, that's the power of spirit. Mm -hmm. Is that when you listen to something, things happen effortlessly mm -hmm. with greater impact than you could ever try to plan in your own human physical nature. Right. So anytime I get a, a word from spirit, I move on it. Even when I don't understand it, I move. And every time... Hindsight, looking back, 2020, what they say, hindsight is 2020. Every time looking back upon reflection, I can see how that one thing truly altered the course of my life. But you want to know the, the other aspect of it mm -hmm. is that you don't even know what are the opportunities that you're passing up by that will alter the course of your life because you're not doing it. Think about if right. I didn't go to Africa. I would have never have known that would have occurred. But where could I still be in my life? Would I still be kind of lost at that time? Would I still be kind of feeling unrooted? Right. So you don't you don't even know how different your life could be if you stop passing up on the thoughts and the ideas that you have and you start listening to the spirit and trusting yourself to go out on it. Your life could look radically mm -hmm. different. Right. Right. So I want to I want to break down a couple of things because this is just how my mind works. Right. You put something out on Facebook. Right, so you utilize your resources first and foremost. Got a call, you know, got this video, you watched that the whole nine. Then you had the desire, right? That let's move now, that not overthinking, no procrastination. You said, I want to do it this weekend. Kenya is in Africa, it's another country, which means. You got to have a passport, right? So what happens with a lot of us is that we are presented 
with opportunity. We are presented with things that are in alignment with our purpose, but we are not prepared to receive it. Mm -hmm. So you got to be prepared. It also costs money to get to Africa. Probably, especially if, and I've never done this, I never booked a flight to Africa four days before it was yeah. time to go, right? So you having the financial ability to do that, to take advantage of an opportunity, again, we're talking about being prepared. Like, when people step back, you know, we always talk about the Lord works in mysterious ways. I've been hearing that for forever coming out the church. But people really don't take the time to really acknowledge what the hell does that mean? What does mysterious look like? Right. You know, that mysterious usually isn't a single event. It's a chain of events. And sometimes as you go down the chain of events, they get more mysterious and miraculous as they go along. But man, that's, that's, here's another piece of that too. We talk about, you know, you had, you knew that you had a good circle or a good um, group of followers who were going to potentially be able to assist you with this, right? There's an old saying, you know, I know we like to dismiss old people nowadays. They don't know what they're talking about. We know everything. But there's an old saying, misery loves company, right? Mm, yeah. And we all care about what's the company you keep. I was on, I think, Instagram, you know, here recently, and I saw a quote that said, I had a purpose before everyone had an opinion. Mm. And what I've seen is, is that when I see people who are getting a lot of money or, or have a certain level of success, the people who I see who have something negative to say are usually people who don't have any money mm. or at least don't have nowhere near the money the person they're talking about. They ain't got no motion. Right. When I see somebody who likes to read a lot of books. They spend a lot of time reading and studying. The person who has something to say is not somebody who reads. You know, yeah. I'll be a negative. Um, me and my diet, me being vegan, the people who usually have the most negative things <laughs> to say about me and my diet, mm -hmm. you can visually see that their diet is not working out for them. <laughs> so, so I say that to say, how much do you think like people's opinions of what it is that we do play a role in us not pursuing our purpose? Uh, it plays a major role. You know, there's a, I tell the people, when you start pursuing something that's different than the people around you, three things are going to occur, right? Number one is they're going to tell you all the reasons why it won't work. Oh man, this is gonna fail. Are oh, you trying to do that business? That ain't gonna work. Are oh, you trying to do this business? That's gonna fail. Everybody's gonna, that's the first thing they're gonna, they're gonna tell you all the reasons that, that it's gonna fail, right? And mm -hmm. then when you start doing it, number two is they're gonna start laughing at you. Oh man, look at him. He's speaking with he Muslim now. Oh man, he corny, man. You, you used to be the man in the street. You done fell off, right? So they're gonna laugh at you trying. They're gonna laugh at your social media posts. They're gonna see me. They're gonna mm -hmm. laugh at you, right? But if you stick through it, if you're strong enough to make it through those two things, then you're going to reach number three. And what happens at number three is they tell you how they always believed in you. <laughs> they tell you. <laughs> hey, listen. Hey, listen. They tell, oh, my God, bro. He was always different. I always knew you was going to do something, bro. You always thought differently than everybody. Hold on. I was just, I was just Muslim and I fell off the other day. But now uh, you knew I was always different. See, mm. most people, they don't believe in themselves to make it through the first two. But understand this. When you start raising your level of consciousness, you start vibrating on different frequencies, you're going to start meeting people, circumstances, and opportunities that align with the new frequency of which you're vibrating on. Meaning that mm. when you start reading, 
when you start going to events, when you start ascending and raising your level of consciousness, there's people out there that don't know you that will support you a hundred times more than a person that's known you your whole life. Right. People right. pay me tens of thousands of dollars. And not one person was somebody that I knew from my one person. I take that back. Literally one person was somebody that I knew from my past. Everybody else, what bro? We was just smoking blunts five years ago. Bro, right. you was me and you grew up hitting licks together. But there's people out there that are waiting for you. There's new friends, there's new a community of people, there's new supporters that will support you based off of who you say you are now not based off of their uh, imagination of where you were in the past. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes it's harder for people to accept that we grew up in the same city. Yep. We from the same streets. Mm -hmm. We are from the same school mm -hmm. and your life is where it is now. And my life is where it is now. It's hard for somebody to accept that his life is where it's at now. And we come from the same school, the same city, the same, we have the same opportunity. So stick through that. Understand that there's people out there that are waiting to support you, but they cannot support you if you've never make yourself known before them. You right. got to make yourself known before those people to find you. And you're going to get so much love and so much support from the people of who you are right now, rather than trying to hold on to the past friendships of who you were just for the sake of time, uh, how long we've been knowing each other and the connections that we have from the past. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. Beautiful. I promise they're gonna tell you how they always believe in you. <laughs> they definitely gonna. They gonna say y'all cousins. Y'all cousins. Hey, we was different. Yeah. Hey, bro, remember this? Hey, bro, I just always knew there was something different. They're gonna say, I promise you, just stick yeah. to it. Just, yeah. just, just, just get to step number three right now, and you'll be good. It reminds me of that uh, that Michael B. Jordan incident. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, L'Oreal or something like that. Her name on the on yeah. the carpet and was like, you know. Talking to him, he was like, "Oh, yeah, I'm the corny guy." Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember that. I thought I was the, yeah. I, I was the corny dude. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. how. Hey, I always knew you was gonna be something. <laughs> yeah, that's how I happened. But you know what I do is when I encounter those people, I give them love, and I still help them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. 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 Because to to kind of shun them is to shun myself. When you ascend to a different level of consciousness, everybody is just a reflection of you. So I would never wish somebody else to lose because in turn, I'm just wishing that on myself. I should. Mm -hmm. You know, so I those can. people are like, yeah, bro, like here, let me teach you the things that uh, I knew. I send people books all the time. Hey, bro, what's your address? I see you three books right now that could take a change of life. You know, hey, I'm having uh, I'm having this conference. Come to this event. You know, I put people in positions and everything. I don't sit there, ah, oh, because you didn't believe in me. Nah, what? It's cool. You just ain't see it then. Now you see it. Now let me still help you and hope that you can help somebody else. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. That's dope. That's dope. That, see, that's that's when we talk about that that positive karma. That's what you're creating, that, that positive karma. And that's what is helping to fuel your success on your path. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very dope that you do that. So... We'll talk about something to kind of help people find their purpose because you know you've you've delivered a lot of great information and there's still gonna be some people who are gonna be like, but still, how do I find my, my purpose? You know, every episode for well, since we started the the show on, on the audio version in season one. We end the, the episode off with life's a journey, don't forget the map. Because mm -hmm. in E5, we yeah. created this map, this blueprint in heaven. We signed this contract that said, this is what I'm going to do. These are these are the highs, the lows, and everything in between. Right. That I wanna, you know, I want to accomplish to help me on my purpose when I get there. And and if I we teach that going through the process of birth, we forget those things. So we, we are spending our life trying, trying to remember. And there's many different ways in which we can use to remember. But one of the things that we use in Ifa is divination. So how important has divination been for you? And what kind of role has it played in helping you on your journey to your purpose? Oh my God, man. It's it's the thing that that uh produced massive belief in Ifa. 
Mm-hmm. It's like when somebody can sit across from you and tell you things about yourself that you've never even told nobody else. You like, hold on, real quick, man. How, where, where, <laughs> hey, how'd you do this little thing with this chain again? What, like, what you doing? Where this coming from? Right. right. Divination is my way to make sure that I'm always on path. Mm-hmm. Divination is the way that it pulls out the unconscious limitations that I didn't even know was there and bring them to consciousness so that way I could deal with them and change them. Mm-hmm. You know, I tell people the number one characteristic that anybody in this world can have is not belief, is not confidence, is not love, is not great character. To me, it's awareness. Mm-hmm. Because you can never change anything that you're not aware of these changing. So you got to have awareness if you are, are having good character or bad character. You got to have awareness if you're on path or off path. Mm-hmm. And what divination does is it brings that awareness to me is F and I'm, am I on path? And it teaches me things about myself that I didn't even know, or maybe I had an idea about, but now it's producing clarity. Mm-hmm. And again, with clarity becomes confidence, right? So now I'm confident in the work that I'm doing with myself. And now when I'm doing monthly divinations, like I do with you two, right? It may be at the beginning where it's talking about you need to work on this aspect, and then it shows up again, then it shows, and then it, but then it's like three, four months. It's like, hey, we ain't seen that in a while. I'm like, all right, bet. You know what I mean? I'm doing that work. I'm right. mastering now. I'm doing good in this field. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so divination it provides a way to make sure that I'm still on path. Uh, even in my Ishefa, it said that I needed to uh, stay in divination with Ifa, divine with Ifa, uh, with any major decisions that I'm making. <laughs> It's right. allowed me to uh, multiply, and make more money than I ever made. Because I divide about everything. Is this a good investment? It's a bad investment. I divide about everything, right? It allows me right. to uh, make sure that I'm only dealing with people that are in my highest and best usage when I divine about uh, relationships with partners or anything like that. Um, divine about moving. I divine about any major decision in my life. And Absolutely. I can tell <laughs> how fast my life has excelled. By not because of the divination, but because of the awareness that the divination is bringing to me and putting me in alignment with the work that I have to do. And because mm-hmm. of that, uh, it's excel my life more than, than anything. So you guys know how much of a difference it's made. You know, even in my mastermind, I have everybody got a divination session with you guys. Um, a lot of them are still doing monthly divinations with y'all. It's, it's, it's one of the mm-hmm. most impactful things, man. And it's a gift that I like to give to anybody that I mean. I always tell somebody, if you want to do I'll pay for your first divination because you deserve to experience uh, clarity on, on things that you may be feeling lost in in your life. It's one of the biggest things that's changed my life. I should. I say, we, we definitely appreciate that, man. Like right. I said, we have uh, a lot of monthly clients from, you know, uh, working with you in the, your mastermind class and Man, we created some good relationships with those people as well. So it's a beautiful thing. I have noticed a connection between people who are particular about trying to improve themselves and how they use E5. Because besides you and a couple other people from your mastermind class, people who are really focused on a certain level of elevation the way they use E5, they're going to come and ask all the questions. Like, hey, look, I'm going to send you the questions ahead of time for our session, you know, so we can have them. And I noticed that. And versus people who are kind of just kind of existing, kind of floating, you mm-hmm. know, there's a huge difference. And, and it just dawned on me actually in this moment. And I'm thinking back like, yeah, that's that's the connection. Because usually yeah. people, most people don't really ask any questions. They just receive what E5 has. Yeah. Right. And you know, it's mostly women. It's the women that are more in tune with spirit and that are willing to ask the questions. Uh, Mm. I can't remember a man sending us questions in before time, trying to get down to uh, the depths of something that they got going on. Besides you, (laughs) you know, uh, yeah, I'm my question. Hey, what's going on with this? (laughs) Right, right, right. (laughs) Right. But mostly women, it's it's mostly women that will send us questions beforehand asking about, you know, everything from what investment should I make? And is this person uh, right for me as a mate? Um, man, we get all of those questions from from women. But, yeah, that's a yeah. good observation about how people use Ifa 
and uh, the divination tool that we have been gifted with, how they use that to their benefit. They do. Right. Yeah, they do. It's massive benefit when you, uh, when you use it, but not just gift the information, but you actually start acting on the information. And right. especially when you divine about something, if I tell you something is going to occur, and then it happens. You're like, hold on real quick. I didn't. But then when it happens, you're like, oh, okay, this is what Ifa was talking about. So if I may say, right. hey, listen, this is going to occur. Your responsibility is maintaining good character throughout it. So then when it happens, you're like, this is the part where I'm supposed to have good character. Right? Mm -hmm. Again, that awareness, man, awareness changes everything. And I think divination is the, the best way to bring awareness to different aspects of your life. And you know, and you know, this also gives us more faith in Ifa. You know, I came, I came in skeptical. Uh, Fafore came in skeptical, but once we started to have these experiences, it's like, nah, man, there's something to this. It's something to this. It sounds funny if you tell somebody who hasn't had these types of experiences. Mm -hmm. It sounds funny. It sounds like a scam. It sounds like witchcraft. And yeah. until you have the experience yourself and i'm just not talking about the divination because the divination was the first thing my very first divination with baba was it was life altering to know yeah. that somebody was practicing something thro throwing a chain on the ground and yeah. tell you things about yourself that like you say you've never told anybody but more than that we've been present watching energy shift we've been present watching things take place. Uh, I've told the thing about my wife, her inability to have children and all of the things that the ears did at the compound with the cutting of the core ritual, the womb blessing. And I, I've watched if I work, I've watched priests move energy in the ways that they would have that energy to move. I've, I've had those experiences. So this is not a belief for me. This is, this is a knowing. This is a, yeah. an understanding. This is yeah. I know I I know what's going on. I know what can be done. So yeah, yeah man, I'm here for it. I'm here for it, man. I, I think, what, I think what you just I think what you just said is so important, man. Is that it's not a belief; it's a knowing, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Things start off as a thinking. There's a difference between thinking something to believing in something to knowing something. Mm -hmm. Even belief it still leaves too much room for doubting. Yeah. You can only believe in something that you're not sure of. You don't believe you could tie your shoe. You know you could tie your shoe, all right? right. So it, it, you can only believe in things that uh, you don't know. And that leaves too much room for doubt. But like you said, stepping into Ifa is not a belief anymore, it's a knowing. And, right. and when you treat it as such, and you uh, stay in alignment with that is what you're told, you see the, the fruits, uh, the fruits, the benefits of it. You know, and right. uh, my life has became fruitful. <laughs> for me being in alignment with myself, my uh, Odu, my contract, and that in which I came here to fulfill. Mm. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the most recent things that we've got uh, gotten the benefit of seeing you do was your travels in India. Um, we got a chance to see you again do your travels of Arumila. Uh, we've gotten the chance to see you have such an impact on some young ladies in India. So talk to us about that, about how that came uh, about and how does that fit in with your purpose? How, how does that type of stuff going all over the world and having that type of impact on people fit into your purpose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My purpose is uh, that for humanity. Mm. You know, Malcolm X had a quote that changed my life. He said, uh, I'm for truth no matter who's it. I'm for truth no matter who tells it. I'm for justice no matter who's it for or against. I'm a human being first and foremost. And for that, I'm for whoever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. Mm. You know, so I live my life as a humanity as a whole, not humanity uh, for the rich person, not having love for the client that's paying me, not having love for the celebrity, not having love for the person who I benefit from but just loving people as a whole, you know? Mm. And when I went to India, uh, what you're referring to is when I was uh, just on the kind of the beach, just reading a book. 
And this young girl came up to me. Her name is Depika, 14 year old girl. And she was trying to sell me and the girl I was with. She was trying to sell us a tissue paper, you know, because that's how they make money. And we we're like, no, we're not interested. And they told us, don't, don't give money to, uh, don't give money to people, because then they're going to start swarming you. So we just said, no, we're not interested. And a lot of other kids have, but they were kind of like disrespectful. Like, I remember one little dude came up, like he looked at the bag. He was like, give me that. I'm like, what? He like eight. I'm like, bro, man, if you will get out of here, like, but she was very <laughs> respectful, right? She was like, oh my God, I like your hair. She told the girls, well, I like your hair. And they start conversing. And I said, um, hey, listen, I said, I'm not interested in buying tissue, but we asked her, she, we said like, what is it that you love doing? You know, I always love asking, what is it that you love doing? She said, I love drawing and painting. And I said, wow. I said, so uh, I'm not interested in buying your tissue. I said, but I'll be interested in buying some of your drawings or your paintings. Like, do you have some? And she's like, what? Oh my God, like, no way. I'm like, yeah, you're the best artist in the world. Like, of course I want to buy your paintings, right? Uh, so then she took us to where they live, which was just a homeless shack along the seashore. I'm actually going to post a video here soon. And uh, she went back and got her paintings and everything. And uh, we just developed a relationship with this little girl, you know? And that was probably one of the most humbling experiences of my life, you know? I remember one day we went to pick her and her sister up. She's 14, her sister's 23. And we went to pick them up and I called an Uber a car to take us to the restaurant. They've never been to a restaurant before. We get mm. inside of the car and her sister's sitting up in front, the 23 year old is sitting in the front seat and the driver tells her to put on her seatbelt and she didn't know what a seatbelt was. Mm. Right. And he's trying to tell her like this over there. She didn't know what it was because this was, this was her first time ever riding in a vehicle. Wow. And it's not like they live in a rural part. Like picture like somebody that's homeless. Uh, for those I know like Los Angeles, like when picture of you homeless on like South Beach or if you homeless in Venice Beach in LA or Santa Monica, like you're, they're homeless a, a, around one of the most prominent areas of Mumbai. You know, you mm. see Benzes and stuff around there. So it's not like they're living in, in this impoverished community. They're just homeless, but they've never ridden in a vehicle. They've never been inside of a restaurant. You know, I rented an Airbnb villa that took them to, and they hopped in the pool for the first time. It was beautiful. And this was the first time ever taking a shower uh, inside. This was their first time ever laying in a bed, right? So it's like when you experience those type of experiences, it gives you a type of humility. And it's one of the experiences that I experienced going to Africa as well. I remember my first day in Africa, I went to the slums, and I'm in the slums, and I'm in a, like a 400 square foot square foot just room where like seven people sleep and there's no electricity. I was in Kibera slums. It's the second biggest slums in Africa. The first biggest is, is in South Africa, but Kibera is a worse slum because the South Africa is more like apartment buildings. This is just like shacks and stuff, right? No running water, no sewage, no plumbing, no electricity, nothing. Trash just everywhere. People just use the bathroom outside. And I remember I'm sitting inside of this apartment and um, I said, uh, I said, God, I'm sorry. Like 24 hours before that, I was in my 22 floor high rise overlooking Los Angeles and I was complaining because the elevators were running slow. Mm. And I was like, God, I'm sorry for ever complaining. You know, so going around the world and experiencing different culture, like I want to be with the people. You know, I want to experience the people. I don't want to just be in a luxury. I want to experience the people. It allows me to uh, remain a, a high sense of humility. It reminds me to keep a, a high sense of compassion and love for everybody as a whole. And it gives me a deeper level of gratitude for that that I have because you're experiencing the extreme of what it's like not to have it. To not to have shoes, to not to have shelter, to not allow, allow uh, have electricity, and those people are often the ones that are forgotten about the most. You know, and sometimes you give them a little love, uh, they give a little hope for their life of what's possible and everything. So, it's what I love doing, man. I'm be launching a campaign like next year. It's gonna be a crazy campaign, a worldwide campaign that I'm gonna do going around the world. Um, but I love connecting with the people who are forgotten about. You know, the ones that are like stepped on and everything. You know, I feel like our, our hearts connect the most, but I connect with anybody, but I just love being in different cultures, experiencing the different cultures and connecting with uh, different people. Humanity as a whole. I have a world tattoo on my hand and I have an X. It always reminds me of that. Humanity as a whole is for the world. It's not just for uh, black people. I'm for the world. I'm for people in general, people as a whole, man. And that's what uh, 
God has called for me in my life. So, uh, so tell us about the academy that you started to help like people find their purpose. And yeah. Purpose. Yeah. So I was, I used to speak about helping people discover their purpose, but what I realized was it's not enough to discover your purpose if you're not empowered to actually live in it. So mm -hmm. I started Cora creators of reality Academy. It's an online Academy that teaches people not only how to discover your purpose, but it teaches you the tools and strategies to actually live in it. I don't know when this is going live, this video, but I'll be launching a challenge, a five day dreams to reality challenge on May the 8th, where it's five days. I'll be teaching each of the five days, discovering your purpose, teaching you how to build your belief system, your confidence, teaching you the laws of the universe, how to use them, energy, vibration, frequency, how to raise your level of consciousness to create that in which you want to desire. It's absolutely free. So if anybody's watching that, click the link in my bio, sign up for that. You'll definitely get immense value out of that. Uh, but that's why I created Cora, man, was, uh, you know, a lot of people, I help people discover their purpose, but they still weren't empowered to live in it. They still weren't living a life of happiness, a lot of mm -hmm. uh, financial freedom, a life of confidence. Um, so I wanted to take all the knowledge that I've gathered. You know, I've been to hundreds of thousands of dollars of seminars, events, conferences, mentorship, books all around the world. And I was like, uh, it's time to teach this knowledge and to uh, pour into others. And again, I truly believe that we could create the reality in which I, we live in. So I created Cora uh, as a way to teach people that. So I have Cora inside of Cora is 12 weeks, which is life creation. It's a six week spiritual creation course. And then another six week uh, course and coaching creation for those that want to step into learning this knowledge themselves and being able to disseminate it and teach it to others. I teach you uh, how to do that as well, how to make your first 20K doing that as well. Um, so that's everything that's inside of Cora and we'll be expanding it. This is like my baby that the more I learn, the more I pour back into this and teach and everything, mm -hmm. right? And uh, y'all yeah. know how obsessed I am with learning, man. So, uh, so so many people have done it. So many people's lives have changed. A lot of my students have made their first 10,000, 20,000, 50,000 um, inside of the academy when it just launched the last few months. Um, people have healed traumas. People have strengthened their relationships. People have left their jobs and been able to produce an income. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. so my students have gotten results and that's the most important thing, right? As when you see those that you teach and getting results, you know, Leah, y'all know Leah, she just texted me yesterday. She said, uh, uh, look at the result that your students, students are getting. And she sent mm -hmm. me a, a, a screenshot from somebody that she's teaching. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's when you know, it's real. When your right. students, students is getting results. Right. Right. right, right. <laughs> That's, that's when you know it's real. So that's Cora, man. Anybody that want to learn more information, they can click the link in my bio to learn more information about the Creators of Reality Academy and how you can tap in and start learning uh, this information for yourself to cultivate a life of not just personal fulfillment, but financial freedom as well. Hmm. You know, this was a beautiful episode. Uh, as Fafori said, most people wouldn't equate finding your purpose with healing. Um, I think this episode has done a good job to show otherwise. Um, man, we commend you. You are a very young man and man, you are doing big things. You've traveled the world. Uh, you and I have similar backgrounds, but you are young and bossed up. You are doing, you are really, really, really <laughs> doing your thing, man. And we, uh, yeah, man, we commend you. Everything that yeah. you do is, uh, is admirable, man. We love you, man. Yeah. I appreciate y'all too, man. And this is the one thing when we when we did the um, when we spoke at uh, this master class and when we talked afterwards, I said you were the youngest person in the room. Mm -hmm. Right? You're conducting this class and you are the youngest person in the room. Yeah. And you are humble as well. Humility <laughs> is one of those things that is lacking when we have people who have a certain level of success, notoriety, whatever you want to call it. But you right. are doing it, you are living your purpose and you are doing it graciously. So, you know, I commend you for that. And just just keep doing what you're doing. Keep evolving, okay. keep expanding, keep growing. I appreciate y'all, man. The last thing I tell everybody listening to this is that, uh, I tell people that your greatest potential 
is locked inside of your highest purpose. And until you discover what that purpose is, you'll never meet the greatest version of yourself. Hmm. So truly take time and tap into and discover what is it that your purpose is? What is it that you're meant here, uh, meant to do? If anybody wants more information about how to truly discover that and step into that and learn the tools and strategies, click the link in my bio. I have Cora Academy. I'm on Instagram at I am Kasuti, right? And I love to connect with anybody that's listening to this. Send me a DM. I want to know what you got out of this. And uh, I appreciate y'all for it. You know, Shayun, man, y'all have been a, a true blessing in my life. Y'all spiritual mentors, y'all brothers. We laughed. We was just there in Houston laughing and everything, right? Uh, so I appreciate y'all bringing me on y'all platform, man. And I hope that everybody listening to this had, uh, got an immense value that could truly shift their life from the information provided. Ashe, and we appreciate you for sharing your gifts and talents, not only with us, but, you know, for the rest of our listeners. So, sure. family, you knocked it out the park. This was, this was right. a great, great episode. And if I, we say, true happiness can only come through finding your purpose. Not Ashe. a billion dollars, not all the men or women that you can handle, um, not all the vacations in the world, but your purpose. Mm -hmm. Your purpose. I Find say. your purpose. As I always say, life's a journey. Don't forget the map. Find the map. Whether that's astrology, whether that's numerology, whether that's divination, find the map. You'll find your purpose. You'll find why you came here. You'll find the lesson. You'll find the growth. You'll find the evolution. You will find the peace, the abundance, and all the good things. Now, maybe some ass whoopers along that as well. Yeah. Okay, exactly. it comes with it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you know, life is for the living. Come here, have your experiences, right? They're all for, for your growth. So, thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for, for hanging with us again. We greatly appreciate it. We got one more episode after this, um, and that'll be the end of season three. Please like, subscribe, and share. And as always, life's a journey. Don't forget the map. Peace. 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 Cool to cool to <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>